So, you're lost in the woods and the Armageddon has just sweeped the streets of your happy little village. What do you do? Craft shelter, gather food, or drink your own piss? My name is Badger Ovens, and I'll be answering many of these questions today in Dudes in the Bush. Now, before we get into the meat and gristle of this whole kerfuffle, to survive in the woods for long periods of time, you're gonna need to be cunning and quick-witted. And if you are truly quick on the draw, you will have brought items that simply can't be replaced out in the woods. So before you even start your trek to the outside, try to completely fill out this little checklist of items I made up for you with the most important items starting first. You're gonna want any magazines or survival guides you can get your grubby mitts on. You're gonna want some ripped sheets, saws, nails, tops, garbage bags, twine and wire, screwdrivers, scissors, and some kitchen utensils such as pots or pans. All these proved to be very important to have before you enter the unforgiving clutches of Mother Nature herself. Of course, you can make do without them, but you might not be able to make full use of your surroundings without them. Especially the survivalist guides, they hold the key to many important recipes up in the woods here. Another good thing to know beforehand as well is having experience before you step foot in here is especially important. Here's some good hobbies to pick up before the old end of the world. Hunter is great as it allows you to craft traps and snares for the wildlife. Angler is also very solid of a pick as you can fashion fishing rods and traps as well. These two allow you to really tap into different food banks out here. Herbalist is also very helpful to have, knowing what plants can do to save your life if you are ever sick or ever need a quick boost of energy. Now, I can't stress this enough, but if you can help it, location, location, location. That's gonna be tr key if you wanna truly thrive in the wilderness. Obviously being somewhere near any type of cabin or building would be best, as you can salvage just about everything from it, such as the curtains or the furniture itself. But the most important thing is to be near a fresh source of water. This way you have two renewable resources for survival. The fish in the river or lake, and the potentially potable water. So making camp near a river might just save your life. Today we're in a remote location in the woods. The handy pond nearby to make some demonstrations easier. Now that we've done some basic prep and picked out a survival location, we move on to the most important aspect in wilderness survival. Foraging is how our ancestors lived way back in the primordial era, so we need to tap into that mindset and try and find some useful materials in this area. Try and keep up. Now, before we get started with searching, it's often better to prioritize what you need, so you aren't so scattered in the noggin when you're looking around for materials. If you need materials for building, neglect the food sources, and if you're crunching for a snack, overlook the stuff like branches and stones. Having some skill or a good guide would be especially helpful here as well. So that way you can look for herbs and remedies, which will help your chances of survival dramatically. Since we're needing just about everything right now, we shall search for it. Nice! It seems like we got a plethora of goods from that expedition. The higher your skills with foraging, the quicker you can get through them. There's also the added benefit of finding more resources in the area, such as mushrooms or even frogs and wild eggs if you're lucky enough. Some of these things have the added benefit of being able to be added into crafting recipes, such as cooking. These berries look awful delicious, wouldn't you say? Well, don't get too far ahead of yourself, because looks can be awful deceiving. Out of most environments, there will at least be one mushroom and one berry that will be hazardous to your health. Now, if you're not an herbalist or haven't read the magazine, you'll need to be a bit crafty before you do anything. Generally, eating a single poisonous berry isn't harmful. It's when you start binging the damn things is when you start to have a bad time. So what I like to do is test each berry individually and see which one makes me sick. After that, I write down the results so I can avoid them in the future. Remember to eat the berries in small amounts during the time, because if that poison stacks, it will be deadly. Generally, one berry wouldn't kill you, even if you're a bit weaker on the stomach than most. 
to demonstrate this, I'm gonna be eating one of these poisonous berries myself. Now, this is only for educational purposes, so don't try this at home, ladies and gents. Might I say how delicious that is for a poisonous berry. Now we'll just have to wait and see for the results. I might have to eat another to feel even any symptoms whatsoever. Let's go rest up in the bunkhouse for a minute and see what happens, I. Eh? Yeah, I'm really feeling it now, but it's only mild symptoms, so it should clear up real quick. A little bit of rest and I should be alright. Now I know I can avoid eating those blueberries in the future. Now, this changes from world to world, so every experience will be different, so you gotta really watch out for those poisonous berries. Even if you think you probably know them, you probably don't. Just make sure you're an herbalist or you have the guide, and if not, tread carefully, ladies and gents. It could be a rocky road. I know I'm gonna feel this in the toilet in a couple of minutes. Now, thankfully, Mother Nature provides us the building blocks for a lot of everyday tools we collect on the usual. We can craft stone axes and knives from our bushcraft needs, and a spear could be crafted for both fishing and self-defense. If you feel like building something a bit more permanent, given you have enough skills to pull it off, you could also make a hammer to make that dream a possibility. The beautiful thing is that most of these tools and weapons can be crafted with everything you can find out foraging. The only thing you need is rip sheets. They are the gun that holds everything together. So you gotta make sure you have an abundance before you step foot in here. Good thing they don't weigh much, huh? Once you craft everything, you'll have most of the tools ready for the job. So as long as you have some leftover nails and a saw, you should be able to start your world in a shock of your dreams. Now, if you don't have the means to craft a permanent shelter yet, Making a quick tent kit should be pretty easy to follow. Just make sure you have a top, four stakes, and a couple of steady sticks. The only outside item you need is a top. It's a good way to stay quick on your feet and always be on the move out there, as a tent only weighs three kilos and can be reassembled quickly. For demonstration purposes, I have a kit right here that I'm gonna go make and set up this tent. It should provide us enough shelter for the night at the very least, and it should be pretty comfy. Beats being exposed to the elements anyways, haha. <laughs> Berries are good and all, but they severely lack calories. In order to keep yourself fattened up for winter, you're gonna need some really fatty food. And fish are chock full of fatty oils and protein. Now, here's a small crash course over fishing. First of all, you need a tool to catch the fish. Hopefully you're able to make or find a fishing pole which requires twine, a hook, and some fishing line or twine to keep it maintained. The twine and line is also used to repair fishing rods after overuse. Now, if you don't have one, you're still in luck. You can simply craft a spear and try your luck with spear fishing. It's a bit more tricky and it takes longer to catch fish, but you can definitely catch enough for a full day's meal. The best times for catching fish are at dusk and dawn, so just from around 600 to 800 hours and 800 to 2000 hours. At these times, it is much more likely to catch a fish, which helps tremendously with fitting this whole thing into your busy schedule. You can also catch some fish in the winter if you're lucky, though it's gonna be a lot harder. Anyways, that's enough talking. Let's head over and give it a go for ourselves. Try and keep up. We have some preset supplies just to give you a good first-hand experience on the matter. Now, it's only noon right about now, but we should still be able to catch something. I think I'll throw out the line, but before we do that, we should set up our fish trap. Now, this bad boy is gonna be able to catch bait fish over time. It's a quick snack and it means to a big end. If you use bait fish, the only fish you will catch is a northern pike, the equivalent to an apex predator in this water. Alrighty, now that we got the fish trap in the water, let's catch a fish. Worms are the most common bait, but you could also use various insects if you're lucky enough to find them. There are also artificial lures like the one on the floor. They can last a heck of a lot longer than live bait, but you can only find them in the modern areas. In seconds flat, we were able to make this Mike shit fishing rod to try our hand at it. Let's go chuck out the line and see what we can catch, eh? Oh, fish on, fish on! <laughs> yeah, look at that bad boy. It's not much, but for our first cast, that is pretty damn good. Let's see if we can catch any more, eh? My, 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 we got ourselves a mess of fish. This should be very nice for the cooking segment that we're gonna have later. That's gonna be near the end, though, so stay tuned for that, cuz. We're gonna make some fine cuisine out of these specimens. We got trout, bass, and a single northern pike. I'd say that's a win. Lots of fatty goodness there. 
and that should keep up our weight gain so we don't get unnecessarily underweight out here, which is a very big problem. Up next, we got farming. This one's a bit easier to follow. Let's head over to the farming plot, shall we? Try and keep up. Alrighty. This one is actually pretty simple, given you have seeds and a mean to make furrows. So, the first thing you want to dig out for is a furrow with the seeds. I recommend some kind of instrument, such as a shovel or hand fork. But you could use your bare hands, if you're desperate enough and don't mind risking injury. After that, pop open the seed packet and drop them in. All you need to do after that is keep them watered, and they should grow into a renewable food source. A few tips though should be separating your plots so that a bloody disease doesn't wipe out your entire crop. A composter would also be great use for any leftover rotten food you get afterwards. That's about it for farming, nothing crazy, but make sure you harvest whatever it is when it's seeding or else you won't be able to host a second generation of plants. This is where you're gonna make most of your food, so definitely prioritize farming as soon as possible so you can actually get some of those benefits. <laughs> it seems like those berries finally caught up to me. Anyways, up next we have a passive hunting technique that should be able to fill your stomach if pulled off correctly. Trapping. Now, in order to make traps you'll need a guide or some basic knowledge beforehand, but you might be able to find some in the back of a park ranger vehicle if you're lucky enough. Let's head over to the trapping zone. It's a bit of a hike out as traps need to be around 100 tiles out in order for anything to be actually caught in them. Try and keep up. We are here, and as you see, we have a few traps already and some to build. Now, each trap has its own pros and cons. These stick traps, in my opinion, are especially useful because they're the only ones able to catch small birds. Since birds are just about everywhere, and baiting a trap with worms is easy enough as you can just dig furrows to collect more. It's a great way of getting food. But on the other side, box traps and snares are just as nice as getting squirrels and rabbits. One downside about squirrels and rabbits is that they're picky little bastards. You simply can't grab a berry nearby and try and entice them with it. They only have a few select foods that they'll actually try in their diet. So in order to trap well, you should have a farm set up and running, or just have a few supplies beforehand before you invest in the bigger box and snare traps. Generally, the best foods to give them can also be grown naturally. That would be carrots, cabbages, and tomatoes. These should attract rabbits that will be ripe for the taking. Squirrels rely on too many foods that simply can't be grown, and the same thing goes with rats or mice. So stick traps and box traps for rabbits are gonna be a go-to. Another good rule of thumb is that rotten food simply cannot attract anything and you will just be met with disappointment. Alrighty, that should be pretty good. Let's go set up this wire trap. Now this bad boy should be able to catch a nice rabbit. We're gonna be dropping in some cabbage here. Cabbage is honestly one of the best survival foods you can grow out here. High in calories, attracts a lot of game animals, and it's very filling. Alrighty, let's go set up our stick traps now. Remember, we're gonna bait these with worms. Worms are very easy to grab, and the only thing that these stick traps can actually net are birds. So this is gonna be very nice, and this is probably gonna be your go-to for a while, until you get your lettuce farm or cabbage farm all the way up and running. And just like that, we got everything baited and ready for checking in the morning. Let's go leave it be, and we'll see what it gets later on. It's been a few hours, and I'm very confident in our ability to actually net us some game. Let's go check it out real quick. I gave you one fucking job, and all you had to do is throw the damn pet shop animals in the trap. It was that simple, and you fucked it. Just throw anything in there, I don't fucking care. Well, look at here. it, seems like we got our hands on some animals we caught from the traps. It should help us survive a bit longer, and it'll be very nice for materials when we make the cook-off. Huh, very nice. Wilderness provides everything you'd ever need, as long as you know where to look and how to get it. We are finally on the last segment of today's episode. Fire making and cooking. Of course, in order to cook, you need a fire. In order to make a fire, you need marches or a bow drill set. 
Anyways, in order to actually make a fire, first things first, you need a campfire kit. Usually that's just an abundance of planks, logs, and some rip sheets. So as I said, rip sheets are very important to your survival out here. You can actually start a fire without any lighters or matches as well if you find yourself pretty good at starting fires. All you need is a notched wooden plank and a sturdy stick. Let's see if we can actually start up a friction fire before we resort to lighters, huh? Oh, just like that, we were actually able to get one going. Holy shit. Yeah, that'll cook food real nice. There's one thing people really neglect in the survival world. It might not be useful immediately, but in the long haul, you will need this to truly thrive. This is where having simple things such as pots and pans come in handy. But the most important at the start is the almighty bowl. Once you figure out which berries are edible, you can mix them together for a fruit salad and make yourself happy. Now, with how common berries are, this will be a main depression fighter. For me, that's piss, but the weak willed will never understand. Another good thing to have is a cooking pot. One for boiling water, and the other for making delicious soups that are both filling and wonderful to eat. Let's try and make something good from the resources I have currently. Thinking of making a nice gamey stew and a nice fruit salad. Oh, God, that's some good soup. Oh, just like Mama used to make. Alrighty, that's how you make a nice calorie-dense meal. That'll keep my stomach filled for a while, and I think we're nearing the end of this educational guide. Alrighty, I think that's all I have in me for today. I'm all tuck it out. I'm gonna go take a nice little rest in the tent, and I'm gonna call it a day. It's been one hell of a... Oh, my fucking God! Cameraman! God damn it! You're on your own, buddy! <laughs> shit! 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 Where, where's the- where's the damn big- where's the damn van? Holy fuck! Alrighty, cameraman! Try and keep up! Holy shit!